the AK, Deagle, and Op are the three most iconic guns in CSGO. Their popularity practically transcends the game itself. Freiburg proves it only for a moment. How's that trading? Oh, oh, no, it's a triple cheap. kill. But those who actually play the game know that there is another gun that is just as deserving of such hype the USP. Its design, sound, and feel make it one of the most satisfying weapons in gaming. From the meaty thump of squeezing off a round to the gush you hear when it connects to the head. He's on the side of the USP and gained an enormous spot. That's a very nice shot from here, man. He will allow his teammates to run this passion. Gade, what are you doing? That's four kills from him. Monstrous. There's the ace as well. However, the USP isn't the only choice for those on CT. When CSGO first came out, the only option was its sibling, the P2000. And it has always been a deadly handgun in its own right. Does land flashbang is in. What the hell is going on? Yes, what are you doing? But players gravitated towards the USP after it came out, and eventually the P2000 all but disappeared. They're set up right now from phase. Rain's oh. gonna be tested. What a flick to land oh. and rain. Oh my goodness, what is he doing? That was absolutely phenomenal. But should you, you at home, actually be using the USP? Is the P2000 secretly better? Are we all just blindly following the pros and missing out on a handgun that could actually be beneficial to the less gifted? Does the USP's accuracy truly outweigh the P2000's ammo capacity? Or is there actually a psychological reason for what's going on? And ultimately, should you make the switch? Okay, as I mentioned, the P2000 was originally the only CT starting pistol way back when the game first came out. And even when compared to the Glock, it was still an angle holding melon popper. Dupree and Device have nowhere to go, completely surrounded. Shoxy finding one, Dupree now takes one, takes two, oh. takes the third, Dupree just makes it look so good. However, once the all important arms deal update rolled around, the USPS was reintroduced to the franchise. Franchise. And by the first ever CSGO Major, usage between the two pistols was split. That trend continued through 2014 and 2015. And as a spectator watching the best of the best do unthinkable things with both, it was sort of hard to tell if there was actually a difference. Dennis is extremely good on these pistols to start that momentum off. Fast play, very fast play, and there it is! Oh my god, Dennis on cue, on point, all three kills again! I'm done. Don't even buy guns. Just this guy could use a USB for the entire game, and I would be convinced because G2 certainly has to be convinced. It no might way. be the ace to Dennis with an absolutely perfect round. There are still four liquid players towards me. Now they know, but it's too late. Dennis with a fast frag on a simple. Sure, he could get the return, but the bomb will be planted. Dennis posting a defense by the APC now as that bomb ticks away. Three versus three as Dennis pops more heads. Is this guy done just yet? I don't even know. He's got all of my support as well. This is a very tough re-entry for Liquid. What? Dennis is getting in there again. And there might be one more, of course. Dennis with the ace. But by 2016, the P2000 had all but disappeared from pro play. Sure, some stayed true to the P2K, but not enough to make a dent in the game's statistics. But why? What exactly were the differences? Well, the two most obvious differences can be noticed just by equipping them. The USP has a massive suppressor, and the P2K has more bullets, both in its magazine and reserve pool. The benefit of having more bullets is pretty straightforward, but does the suppressor actually do anything? Well, sort of. Compared to the P2000, the suppressor on the USP does make it a lot quieter, especially at longer ranges. So hypothetically, you could be a bit sneakier with the USP. Since it is quiet and has no tracers, you could beam enemies from behind without them even noticing. But that's probably only gonna matter in lobbies where no one is really communicating. And if that's the case, 
you probably have bigger problems than which CT pistol is better. On top of that, the silencer does have its drawbacks. As fun as it is to let the old dog bark once in a while, taking the silencer off the USP quickly makes it the worst gun in the game. But more importantly, the input for taking off your silencer is bound to your right click, and you can't change it without screwing up your other binds, like scoping in on the op. This means that people like me and actual professionals can sometimes die in a gunfight because they inadvertently got stuck in an animation. That's that one piece of util, but in the two and four, I don't want to write them off just oh, yet. No. Oh, he's hit his right click. Anyway, if we do a deeper dive and look into the gun's actual stats, they're the same in many aspects. The damage, armor penetration, rate of fire, and range modifier are all identical. The only difference is the recoil control. The USP edges the P2000 out ever so slightly, and as a result, it technically improves the accuracy, whether you're standing, crouching, or moving. I say technically because the difference isn't that drastic. Back in 2014, Three Clicks Philip did a video where he showcased it wonderfully. Standing still, you can see that all of the bullets land much closer to the crosshair for my classified USPS. The spread horizontally seems the same. Crouching makes the USP even more precise. I was surprised about the running accuracy. The P2000 felt more accurate. I swear that some of the bullets from the USP hit the walls, though I can't see them here. Once again, it appears that the USP is more accurate in this regard. And finally, crouching. The P2000 loses against the USP's far neater damage pattern. Now, as good as that video is, it's a bit too big brain for me. Three clicks were showing the worst possible outcome when spamming your pistol. What if you're just tapping away at range as you would in a typical firefight? Well, then the difference in accuracy becomes even less noticeable. Don't get me wrong, the USP is still more accurate, but with the differences being so minor, you'd think a large chunk of the player base would still be using the P2K for the ammo alone. But the thing is, CSGO, apart from all its other intricacies, is ultimately a game about shooting people in the face. And at the pro level, players have gotten really, really good at that. You won't see nearly as many players spamming their USP in a pistol round hoping for the best. They tend to hit their shots. Poison there for the context on A. Good shooting. Oh, oh very clean shooting! Play makes it so quick! That being said, the vast majority of people who actually play Counter-Strike are not pros. I am a reasonably high level player myself and I whiff USP shots all the time. So why is it that we all just equip it without question? Well, there are a ton of things that we CSGO players simply take for granted. Maybe we like the sound. Maybe a friend told us to use the USP when we were first starting, or perhaps we saw a pro use it and never gave it a second thought. And the USP is the perfect example of that herd mentality, since it has resulted in a gun practically disappearing from the game. Which I think is a shame, because ultimately there is a massive case for the P2K. For the umpteenth time, it has more bullets. And as small as that may sound, it is extremely important in a game like CSGO. We are talking about a game of inches. Sometimes just one more bullet in a magazine can make all the difference. P2K in hand, it's gonna spot a tower immediate. First blood being drawn by Hellraiser and still gonna stick around towards mid. This is, this is risky here. Woxic is going to continue to aggress and finds another one, finds a third, finds a fourth, and he gets the ace! Woxic! On top of that, you can really feel the USP's lack of reserve bullets in certain tense situations. Miss some shots, spam some smoke, and before you know it, you can be scouring the ground for a Glock in the middle of a retake. And as good as pros are at tapping heads, even they can run out of ammo. But look at this, he actually sees two people, Flusher, blind shot, takes down Apex, and now they're in the B-bomb site. Flusher getting a chance to reload backup is already here. Mark Hiroshima with a stunning shot, a shot down all of Meister. It's now a 4v4, JW still alive, Kenny gets a kill on Crims. Flusher in the back lines, he's out of ammo, <laughs> a knife is out, what's happening, Flusher? He's oh. getting Stab, he goes down, oh, he drops Flusher, it's gonna be a 2v2, no bomb land, and there it is! All that being said, I feel as if there's just something more here. Something that we're just not seeing. A deeper layer that we've yet to uncover. And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Listen, you all know by now that I'm not the tax shooter guy, and I normally just pop in for the numbers stuff, but that's not all I'm good at. So 
Allow me to be an armchair psychologist for a minute, even though I'm not actually in an armchair. You know what I mean. A few years ago, People Make Games released a video discussing the Thompson machine gun from Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. I know that's a pretty hard left turn from CSGO, but I promise this all makes sense. During the multiplayer beta, testers complained that the Thompson was too overpowered in comparison to the Axis MP40, but it turns out that couldn't have been possible. They're identical, they're absolutely the same damage, uh, rate of fire, reload speed, clip size, absolutely the same. The players are wrong, this is, this is bad feedback. And then we look at the server data and players are getting more kills with the Thompson than the MP40. The players are right. And after racking their brains for a while, the developers discovered the true culprit, the sound. The Thompson had a meteor bass in comparison to the thin, tinny sound of the MP40, and the devs were actually forced to nerf that sound for the sake of balance. And I think that's similar to what could be going on with the USP and the P2K. In our previous Cracked episode on weapon skins, we talked about how they can have a psychological effect on how you perform with a gun. And that same idea can be applied to how a gun sounds. And this isn't even just some ethereal, feel better, play better stuff. There's been actual science done on things like this. In a meta-analysis, that's a study of a bunch of other studies, all of these fine upstanding scientists found a pretty substantial link between improved reaction time as well as higher performance scores in tasks like communication, driving, navigation, and target acquisition when comparing tests done with visual and auditory feedback to those with only visual feedback. Now, they may not actually be doing this test on people playing Counter-Strike, but that just means we can do that one someday. Ultimately, I feel like it's safe to say that these tests certainly show that there's at least some positive effect from auditory feedback in Counter-Strike. It's been well documented that I barely play any CSGO, but even I have to agree that the USP does sound pretty thick. Meanwhile, the P2000, well, I think it's safe to say that it leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> it's also interesting to note that in 2016, the same year that the P2000 dropped off the face of the earth, the pistol sounds were updated to what we know today. Though, maybe I'm reading a little too much into it. The point is, if something feels, or in this case sounds, better to use, people are more likely to gravitate towards it and find success with it, all stats being equal. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. But all this philosophizing about sound design and anecdotes about ammo don't tell the full story. And so far, we've only tested the guns by firing at a blank wall. So we decided to load up a pre-fire practice course on Mirage to see how each weapon would fare if you went to the same path every time. Now, I personally pride myself on my ability with pistols, so I recruited Devin Cool, the writer on this project, who admits that he struggles with pistols. Uh, despite all other aspects of his game being flawless. And after about an hour of him running through the course, his average time was almost identical for both pistols. It still doesn't tell the full story, of course, but it does give us a little bit more insight. At the very least, it's safe to say that these two guns are extremely similar to one another. Except, of course, for the fact that we wouldn't have been able to even complete the course with the USP if we didn't have unlimited ammo turned on. And I don't think we're the only ones who've caught on to the potential benefits of the P2K. Despite the USP's seven plus year reign, some players have experimented with its forgotten brother. And even more recently, we've started to see some of the best players in the world give it a try. But now he's a part of the pack. And we'll see if that can help things. Ooh. For now, it's a liege with the P2K. Pop it a couple heads down ramp. Goes back in for more. Three, four what? from the leash. Looking for the pistol round ace, but you kinder. Ooh, he won't get that chance to steal it. Nine He's running. Left. Here he comes. The karate kid <laughs> chops him down. And already I see two pairs of dual berettas. That's quite oh. simple. <laughs> Gonna open up down through mid. It's a swift one tap onto Majisk. No attempt to trade that one. You've got to run at him. You've got to run him down here. And he's just going through the motions, backing up, playing. Oh, oh what? No. Oh, Dupree. Despite that, the USP still holds favor within the community. And the same can be said at the pro level. USP is. I tried P2000, it's 
this bed. <laughs> I'm gonna say USPS right now because uh, it's just statistically better than the P2K. Having the bullets isn't worth it. Listen, there are plenty of useless weapons in CSGO, but in that same arms deal update, Valve also added the M4A1S, which continues to have a historic rivalry with its counterpart. The A4 and A1S serve different purposes and reward separate play styles, which is a deliberate choice made by the developers. The same cannot be said for the P2K and the USP. But I do not think that the fault lies with Valve on this one. As we have seen, the P2K is not just a serviceable sidearm, but potentially an even better choice for players who either really like to shoot a lot of bullets or aren't as confident in their headshotting abilities. Listen, it is perfectly understandable to follow in the footsteps of professionals and other players you trust. But part of getting good at any competitive game is experimentation and practice. The USP is not, in fact, a one-size-fits it's all solution for every player. So why not give the P2K a try? Come on. Uh, they're out of uh, it. Right. Right. I'm going around and go for it. I told you. Calm down. Keep going. <laughs> I might as well get the last one, right? Just I'm hiding. It's <laughs> <laughs> mm, easy. We're back. Twitter.com. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.